morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the Infatuation Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking to someone who has been to over 68 countries, <laughs> uh, all seven seas, all seven continents, and she's actually gotten paid to do it. So this will be interesting. We'll learn a lot today. We are talking with Michelle, who is a true wanderer. She has uh, been away from home for, what was it, over 10 years now? Uh, yeah, about 10 years in November. Yeah, just past 10 year mark. Oh, wow. Okay. But currently, she's in Abu Dhabi of the UAE. And it is Michelle. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. Super excited. Yeah, no, I, we've been talking about this for a while. Because yeah. you were actually in Antarctica. Yeah. And I was like, hey, you want to come on? You're like, well, internet's not too good down here. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because my internet is spotty now. But um, yeah, down there, it's just so hard. And with the time zones and everything, um, we're basically recommended because we, we know people are going to reach out to us and stuff, which is great. But um, just lining things up is difficult until we're we're out. So I'm glad your 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 schedule is very flexible. <laughs> no, I'm willing to wait for a good story. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, so you're in Abu Dhabi, which I found out just doing just setting up this call, I found out is 12 hours ahead of California. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's not that many places that are 12 hours ahead of us. Yeah, I actually didn't know it was 12 hours ahead until you told me <laughs> yeah. to reschedule this. So, I yeah. knew I knew it was about a, you know, close to a half day difference, but yeah. I didn't know it was exactly 12 hours, so that's pretty this, fun. This time of year, during daylight savings it wouldn't be, but yeah, Abu Dhabi, yeah. Oman, I think Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. There's only a few. There's only a few that yeah, are uh, GM, GMT plus 4. <laughs> yeah, easy for us to calculate. <laughs> that was, yeah. I was like, okay, well, it'll be 8 a.m. my time. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> All right. And we like to greet our guests in the Asian way. So, uh, Michelle, have you eaten yet? I have. Yeah, I had actually, I had some spring rolls and uh, some sesame balls for the first time in an entire year. So I was very excited. Oh, wow. Um, Getting Asian yeah. food in Abu Dhabi. I know. I, I, f I feel like I should be eating a little more of the traditional cuisine, but... I just can't help myself. Like I, there's so and there's so many great Asian options here. I just I saw mm. it. I was like the sesame balls. I I need it. I'm gonna get it. Huh? You think that's because of tourism, the Asian food? It might be. There are. I've I've noticed. Yeah, a lot of Filipinos here. Um, I feel like I'm back in Daly City. Actually, we're <laughs> you know both <laughs> have roots in Daly City. But yeah, I, a lot of I've noticed a lot of Filipinos, a lot of a um, a lot of Indians. Um, there's a lot of Singaporean food, Indonesian okay. food, Chinese, Japanese, food, like everything. Um, wow. It's yeah, I did. I wasn't expecting it, but it's been a pleasant surprise because, like I said, I was. I. <laughs> it's not like I didn't have good food in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. We had amazing chefs, but you know, the food that's my comfort food. You yeah, know, I've I've missed that so. Yeah, yeah I'm no, indul I'm indulging now. <laughs> you're, you're speaking my language. I would do the same thing. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit more about Michelle, uh, give you a little background. She is, uh, well, actually, you can learn a lot more about Michelle's journeys and her traveling by reading her blog at wandereatright.com, and you can follow her on Instagram as well. And it's kind of a must-read for anyone who has Wanderlust. Did you, did you kind of start the blog because that would have been really helpful for you 10 years ago? Yeah, so back then, I think the only information I really found on this type of travel that I was interested, like I didn't really want to be a backpacker. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I wanted a way to be able to sustain my travels, you know, and kind of slow travel or do it for a long period of time. Yeah. And um, yeah, I didn't, maybe, maybe my research skills weren't very good, but um, certainly I think Instagram was like the only thing I was really looking at. And mm. I just didn't understand. I saw a lot of people, you know, Instagram influencers, travelers who are, you know, visiting all these places. And I just assumed I was like, oh, they, you know, because they're influencers, maybe they have their, all these sponsors, maybe mm -hmm. they're getting paid. Um, maybe they came from money. But um, yeah, so it, it would have been great if I could have found the information that I, I have collected now. Yeah. Um, so that's why I've, I've kind of uh, been trying to keep up with my blog and just give this information to people because, you know, I understand it's a lot of people want to see different things, experience different places, but 
It's more about working it in their schedule or finding yeah. ways to financially support them while they're doing this. So, right. yeah, I, I hope my website is helpful for others. <laughs> no, I do that all the time. I'm looking at these people and they're what, 20, 25 years old traveling mm-hmm. <laughs> constantly. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how is this? <laughs> how do you yeah. do this? So your, your, uh, your website, very helpful. I would imagine anyone who's interested in your, especially your specific experiences, you mm-hmm. have a lot of information and your experiences are we're pretty unique for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, hey, before we get into all your traveling, let's dig into your ancestry a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, dad is Japanese American. Mom is Chinese American. Mm-hmm. Were they born yes. in the States? No. So my dad was born in Japan, born and raised. And then my mom was born in Hong Kong. And they both moved to the States uh, for university. So okay. around their 20s. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I was I was born in the U.S., yeah, and I, I heard you say Daily City Roots. Daily little? City. <laughs> oh, wow. I, yeah, I knew it was somewhere wild. in the area, but I didn't know. Yeah, Daily City. Okay, yeah, that's exactly yeah. where we're coming from at right now. So I might even be able to guess your high school, but we won't expose you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not very many high schools. There's not very many. Around. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Um, but I heard you say that uh, I'm not judging you because I don't speak Chinese very well at all, but you don't mm. speak Japanese or Chinese real well? Not well, no, not well at all. Um, so, the way I grew up, my my mom's my mom's parents moved uh, to California with us um, to help raise my brother and I, and okay. so I grew up learning sort of a mix of Cantonese and Mandarin because they're 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 from Shanghai, oh. but my mom grew up in Hong Kong, and okay. they did this thing where they would just mix. Um, just oh, mix gross. the languages together, <laughs> so Cantonese and Mandarin, and so the um, the Chinese I know uh, is not really useful anywhere else, and <laughs> I didn't really realize that until I went to Hong Kong on my own, and um, I could understand everything that people were saying, and so I would try to communicate in Cantonese, and they just like told me just to use English because they're like, <laughs> we don't Same. understand it. No, I get that <laughs> so, too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. And then my I didn't start learning Japanese really until um, I moved to Japan as an adult oh. and then started learning it. But um, I, I don't know if it's the same at, you know, where you teach, but in my high school, Chinese or Japanese was not offered as a second language. Mm, so yeah. I grew up learning Spanish as a second language, right. <laughs> like actually in school, uh-huh. which is just... Strange because I would say grammatically my Spanish is better than my Japanese or Chinese, but it's all yeah. bad. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's functional at best, uh, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I I uh, I feel that I definitely feel that I took Latin in high school, even more useless. Latin, <laughs> I know. I didn't know they even taught that. Yeah, my high school. I went to Lowell in San Francisco, so it's kind of ah, weird. okay. <laughs> Uh, overachiever. <laughs> well, that was the peak of my academics was low high school. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> Do you come home at all? Do you ever get back here? Oh, uh, yeah. At least, well, I, I was home for Christmas. Um, oh, really? So okay. I got to see, yeah, I got to see my family. I try to come back around once a year. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's it's my storage. My parents' house is yeah. my storage. <laughs> but it is it is nice to come back and, you know, just feel at home and, you yeah. know, it's it's easy. You don't have to think about anything because it's, it's comfortable. Yeah. I was going to ask if you owned a bed. I guess, I guess you still have a bed I, at the folks house. Yeah. My parents are very nice. I mean, they're Asian. <laughs> so they're, okay. they're always like, come on back whenever, but um, come back more. Oh, yeah. I, I can see that. You know, I have two daughters and if they did that for a year, I think I would miss them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it says that you've been away from home for over 10 years. And step one was right after college, you applied to an uh, overseas teaching program in Japan? Yes. Yeah, I I, th- I thought for the longest time that I wanted to work in New York after uh-huh. college, which now I'm so glad it didn't work out <laughs> because I don't think I would have liked New York at all. Um, but yeah, the I, I just took the, like I said, the first job that gave me an offer and that was a teaching position in Japan. And my dad had actually talked to me. Um, he had mentioned it, um, you know, throughout my life, uh, my childhood, you know, mm-hmm. like, Oh, if you ever wanted to live in Japan, there are these teaching programs, you know, why not give it a try? And so I, I applied um, after college and 
got into one program and I was like, why not? Um, the contract's only for a year. I've got nothing else going on right now. So yeah, I just went for it and uh, ended up in Japan for two years teaching English. Yeah, you know what? Japan is definitely on the bucket list. Haven't gotten there yet. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I had a friend who. It's all the rage. It is. No, I'm. <laughs> you go on Instagram, you're like, who's not in Japan? <laughs> right? Yeah. The exchange rate, I guess, is driving people. And then. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of Zip Air? There's a new airline called Zip I Air. I have. Yeah. You have to, like, bring your own food, right? <laughs> yeah. They give you Wi Fi and or, that's it. You have to, I think you have to pay for water. You <laughs> Yeah, wait, they give you Wi-Fi, but they don't give you water? I guess, something like that. I don't know. I might be... Oh, that's wild. <laughs> but Yeah, uh, I heard you have to bring your own water, which is yeah. pretty crazy. That's crazy, right? But, you know, for 500 bucks to Japan, hey, you know? It's a good steal. It's a real good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so you're there for two years. Uh, was mm. it... Was it a little bit of a, you know, obviously you chose the destination, but was it part of like, hey, I want to get to my roots. I want to know my dad's mm-hmm. culture a little better. Yeah, um, because I had grown up pretty much Chinese American. So, yeah, it was it was a little bit, well, I want to go to Japan and, you know, see my other side and hopefully learn a bit about the culture uh-huh. and language. The language would be great. Um but also the food. I mean, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, if I, the only thing I knew about Japan, if if, if nothing else, was the food. Yeah. I knew the food was amazing, so <laughs> I was very excited for that. <laughs> yeah, so cool. No, I've had some friends who did it, who did it, and I, I really regret not visiting them because, like mm. you said, long travel is the way to go. I think because mm-hmm. you know, if you go for a week to Tokyo, you're not going to really get much culture yeah. i think but if you go with someone who knows the town you know especially a little bit of a smaller town and they know mm-hmm. the culture or you yourself stay there for years that's mm-hmm. if you really want to know somewhere that's the way to yeah do it. and and japan is all about the seasons i mean oh. you know you see everyone going for the fall leaves mm-hmm. and then they're there for the winter festivals and then they're there for cherry blossoms it's like it it's a different Japan, like every season Ah. and um, getting to stay there for an, an, for two years and, you know, see the changes. It's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. And to get paid for doing it. (laughs) And you get paid. Yeah, exactly. All right. So you do two years in Japan teaching English Mm -hmm. and you have a good time, but your contract is up. And I read that out of desperation, you literally Googled, (laughs) what should I do with my life? (laughs) I did. Uh, yeah, I googled what should I do with my life. I I was in a bad spot mentally after mm. after two years. It was just I just needed a change of pace. Um, so I don't I don't know what I was doing. I was just <laughs> typing in random things, and um, Google gave me a website that um, is WTF should I do with my life dot com, <laughs> and um, it's still functioning to this okay. day. I st- I still I still you look at it because it's it's fun but also interesting Uh um it just it's a random generator you just press the button and it'll spit out a random job or career for you oh wow with a description they've interviewed people who've had those jobs Uh so you get a little look into their um life and yeah um but anyway back in 23 uh 2015 when i did that uh the first job that popped out was you should work on a cruise ship. And I was like, hmm, I don't know how I am with like Mm -hmm. at sea, you know, with seasickness and stuff. But (laughs) I was like, oh, that's an interesting thought. So then I was thinking, I wonder if I can teach on a cruise ship um, Uh, because I don't know what else I would do on a cruise ship. At the time, I didn't know. So I'm assuming it was Google's algorithm picking up my location Uh. because next I Googled, teaching jobs on a cruise ship. Uh-huh. And then that led me to Peace Boat, which is a Japanese educational cruise ship. Wow. Um, I don't think that result would have popped up if I were located anywhere else in the world, yeah. obviously. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and so this, this one is kind of interesting. So you're teaching English to Japanese mm-hmm. citizens? Yeah, so it's a, it's a very interesting program. It's an educational cruise ship. So, um, you know, regular tourist cruise ships, you've got entertainment, Uh you know, for your leisure time. You've got shows, you've got um, comedy shows, you've got uh, singers, dancers. Casinos. (laughs) Casinos, yeah. (laughs) On on this ship, Peace Boat, it's all about education. Mm. So 
Um, it's a world voyage. Um, they've got a northern hemisphere route and then the southern hemisphere route. You start and finish in Japan. Uh-huh. And um, while you're on, the guests, most of them are Japanese, will be taking these lectures. Um, they have guest lecturers that come on. So instead of watching a show, you go and learn about some um, one of the nonprofits that they work for, for example. So, for example, like, um, you know, some if, if our next port was in the Maldives, the port before, uh, someone who runs an NGO or something in the Maldives would fly, come on board. And then while we're sailing to the Maldives, they would give, um, you know, talks about for example, the trash problem, oh, pollution there, huh. and how their organization is um, working, you know, to improve things. And uh, then once we get to uh, the destination, then the guests can choose to take a tour with that lecturer oh. um, some of the times and go and see firsthand. So it's very educational. Wow. Um, and then so that's like the main offering. And then there's also the language classes uh-huh. there there's all these enrichment classes so there was like a, a yoga class um a couple language classes so there was a spanish class and then the english class which is what i was um brought on to help with uh-huh. so giving them english lessons and it's all tailored to the classes and the guests so mm-hmm. when we did uh stop at english speaking ports they could use the language uh-huh. that I taught them on the ship. I mean, so it's yeah. it's more like functional English that we were teaching yeah, them, yeah. as well as some conversational. But, right. um, it, you know, it was – it's it's an enrichment cruise. Yeah. Dude, that um, sounds amazing. So, yeah. I'd, I'd want to go on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Is it expensive? Like, do they it's, pay a lot of money to go on this? To be honest, not really now that I've worked in the cruise industry mm. and I've also seen the cruises to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. At the time, I think it was like – Ten thousand dollars for okay. it was three and a half months. Okay, <laughs> that's not that's not crazy. So, yeah, no, it's not. Especially if you look at some of the cruise prices now. Yeah. Um, some are the higher end and the longer ones. I mean, my mortgage um, is like three thousand a month. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So I mean, there and you've uh, you've probably heard of people that in like will stop paying rent at an apartment, right, yeah. and then just live just on a cruise, cruise ship <laughs> because it makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. There's one catch so, to this yeah. job, though. You don't get paid. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It wasn't paid. It wasn't paid. Um, but I had saved enough uh-huh. from my two years. I'm. I'm. I mean, I'm Asian. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm not a big spender. Uh-huh. Um, and I. I had been saving, thinking that after I was done with my teaching job in Japan, I was gonna. I was going to travel. I just didn't know yeah. how. So I was expecting, you know, to have. A little. To need to sustain yeah. myself financially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they paid the pro the program Peace Boat paid for all my visas. Uh, okay. Again, I didn't have to pay rent for three and right. a half months. Food. <laughs> I got a ten thousand. Yeah, food. I didn't have any utility bills. Um, I didn't have I didn't have a car. I didn't have I didn't have anything. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, not a, not a bad deal if you can if you can afford it. No, I think you were the perfect clientele. You know, like you had mm-hmm. teaching experience, college kid, no yeah. you know no attachments. And you got to see like 17, 18 countries during this time? Yeah, a lot of countries that um, I probably would not have gone to for at least a long time on my own just because of how difficult it is to get there. Like uh, we went all the way around to Africa. We went to a bunch of, you know, the small islands like uh, Mauritius, Uh Madagascar, uh, Maldives, and then we even you know, made it over to South America and then Easter Island, Marshall Islands. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if you think about just a cost of a flight to some of these yeah. remote places, yeah, that's... I mean, they're not extremely remote, but it's it's not easy to get to. No, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, another fun fact. Mauritius, 12 hours ahead, is GMT plus four also. Is it really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no way. I, I did the whole list. I was like, which countries are GMT plus four? <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So all these fun facts. But uh, yeah, you know, that's, you know, now you got me thinking after I retire and maybe when my kids go Mm -hmm. to college, I have a window of a couple of years, you know, (laughs) maybe I could teach, teach on a ship. That'd be cool. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Get in touch with me and I'll, I'll give you some pointers. All right. Let me, (laughs) let me make a note of that one. Okay. So you do that for a whole year. What was that? 
Uh, Peace Boat was just three and a half months. Okay, so 17 countries mm-hmm. in three and a half months. Wow, that's... Yeah, it's a lot. That's cool. Yeah. But you a lot get, of time zones. Yeah. But you get a love for the sea. Is that true? You, you kind of said, yeah, I can live on I there. did. Yeah, I, I, I realized, like, this is kind of fun and I could do this. Huh. Um, but I would like to get paid. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so you apply to the big guys, the uh, Royal Caribbean. What yeah. other companies did you apply to? Like... I applied to Norwegian, Carnival, um, Disney. Uh huh. Yeah, basically the main right. the main ones in the American market. All mm-hmm. right, and so you end up living for over three years on a boat. Mm-hmm. This time, well, not not all at once, but yeah, okay. I, I I worked for Royal for uh, three years total, okay. right before the pandemic was my last contract. Uh, okay, now <laughs> you have a whole list of pros and cons on your mm-hmm. website. I read your list of cons, and it would be a hard no for me. Hard pass on that. Let me list a few of them for our audience. Yeah. And then you're going to have to, but you know, you have all this list of cons, but then you also say that you would go back and that this was like the fondest time in your life. It was. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me, li- I, yeah. <laughs> let me list yeah, out these cons, <laughs> and then you're going to have to convince me that this okay. was a good time. All right. So you have no days off. <laughs> Correct. So you work 365 days a year and mm-hmm. 11 to 13 hour days yeah. <laughs> of constant work. So, well, the 365 days. So we, the contracts are anywhere from like three to nine okay. months. Okay. Um, luckily, my position was always about five months. So after that, you are like, it's mandatory that you take at least six weeks off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think if my contract was nine months, it would be a little different. Um, uh, those those positions are very difficult. Those are like the housekeepers, uh-huh. the restaurant staff. Yeah. Their contracts are nine months. Okay. But, so yeah. so fairly s- constant work for four months at a time. Mm-hmm. You could get woken up in the middle of the night for emergencies <laughs> and you got to go to your station and man it. And yeah. that happened a couple times, medical emergencies. That and- did, yeah. So medical, I... Medical emergencies, we had them all the time. Uh-huh. And it's, I don't know if you know, quite common on cruise ships sure. because there's a lot of older people. Uh-huh. Um, so it happened pretty frequently on my first ship. Uh-huh. Um, but there was one emergency that I did have to respond to at like 3 o'clock in the morning. It was a fire on the ship. Oh, no. Um, but it was it was in the galley. It was just a flare-up. Um, but yeah, like 3 o'clock in the morning... I hear the alarm going off and I'm like, oh my uh-huh. gosh, this is real. Yeah. And we have seven minutes, you know, yeah. to get to our station. My station, it was like 12 decks up and on the other <laughs> side of the ship. So every, you just see everyone in a full sprint. Uh-huh. Um, and then you get there and then you just wait it out. Uh-huh. Um, luckily we were, we were stood down like maybe an hour later. Uh-huh. I can't quite remember, but by then it's four o'clock in the morning and you still have to go to work in a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're glad that nothing happened, yeah. right? That's yeah. the best case scenario is that oh, nothing man. happens. Okay, so there's the hours yeah. of that. All right, then you yeah. might even get strip searched on the way in from different parts. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah, I got pretty close to being strip strip searched, but it's just um, it's it's a uh, thing for crew members. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's not common, though. Okay. That's, not, that's not always going to happen. It just happened to me once. Okay. And then I think this would be the biggest drawback is bad behavior. You know, tourists, mm. they, they pay a little bit of money and they, they think they, they get the yeah. world because like, hey, you know, I'm paying your wages. You got to do whatever mm-hmm. I say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to be sympathetic and understanding because I I know how difficult it is to take a vacation especially in the US sure. right yeah and how how much effort like if you're a family for example uh-huh. you have only so much time that your kid is off yeah. and you can take off right from work yeah. and what if you live in California and the cruise port is in Florida right. you have to you yeah. know spend a day flying out and then you know you only have so much time so I, I understand <laughs> and and you know for a lot of families it's not cheap right uh, of course, um, yeah. to take a nice vacation so I understand but at the same time it's like <laughs> you know it's just respect and courtesy and you know we're we're trying oh, our yeah. best we're working for so long for so many hours like 
yeah, we, we're people too. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of why I, I liked working with the kids because the kids were, in my opinion, easier to deal with than the parents. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was happy if I didn't have to deal with any adults. Yeah. So those are some of the cons, but go ahead. Tell <laughs> me what, what do you love so much about living at sea? Um, well, so first are the people. Like, I think that's one of the main mm. things, no matter where I go. When you're at sea, you're working with like 70 other nationalities Mm -hmm. in the same place. So when we go, you know, to the crew bar or the back deck after we're done with work, you can literally hang out like in any country that you want, basically, (laughs) Um, because you've got people from everywhere. And now, no matter where I go, I have friends in nearly any country that I go to, which is, yeah, it's just great. And you get to learn so much just from being around them, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about like Panama, for example, uh-huh. when I first started working on ships and now one of my best friend, huh. she's from Panama now. So, yeah. and I went to visit her and I met her family and, you know, I got like the local experience. They sure. took me around and it was just great. Um, so yeah, the people, that's always the top thing. Um, yeah. But also you get to go to so many places again that are difficult to go mm-hmm. on your own yeah um, especially in the Caribbean South Pacific mm-hmm. um, I I did a crossing a transatlantic crossing through the Arctic Circle <sighs> and through Greenland like uh-huh. how much would a ticket a flight for that cost you know yeah so yeah it is a lot of work but the the pros for me really made it worth it yeah. um yeah, so I I really enjoyed it. It's not for everyone though. Yeah. I absolutely know it's not for everyone. And sometimes you meet crew members, and you're like, <laughs> "This <laughs> they're probably not going to make it through their contract." <laughs> yeah, you know, I I will take your word for it. I <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to work on a on a Royal Caribbean cruise or anything. But uh, mm-hmm. that's cool. So there's so you worked with kids. You were doing the child care. Yeah. Like 12 hours yeah, a day, camp. 10, 10 hours a day. Yeah. Some, you know, some, some days are shorter. Um, some days are like six. If we were okay. on like one of those crossings, there's fewer kids, but yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of the <laughs> holidays, Christmas, uh, spring break and summer break. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it really cranks up the hours right there. Oh man. Oh man. All right. So there's other jobs too that you could do. You have a whole list on your mm. website, so we don't have to go into all those. But mm. I, I love cruises still. But my my wife after COVID, she's like, I don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But also like, eh. I know I, <laughs> I mean, you could get sick anyway. I mean, it's no different than, than an airplane. Like yeah. you know, with the same True. circulated air. I guess airplane, yeah. you're closer together, maybe. But but you know, you yeah. know that one that ended up in Oakland right during the pandemic and they had some cases and they wouldn't let them get off the ship. Oh yeah. I understand I understand that. I had a lot of crew friends who I think ended up basically quarantined in their room, stuck in their rooms in their small tiny yeah. crew cabins yeah. for like weeks at a time. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, I was seeing that side and I was like mm. Oh man, it's just so difficult to see. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But it sounds like it's bouncing back. I've heard people booking cruises, mm-hmm. people doing it more. So yeah. that's good. All right, so that brings us to the big chill, <laughs> which is <laughs> so. Big chill. How did you how did you hear about a job in Antarctica? Uh, this is I, I was just watching TV on the ship. I was uh, in the crew TV. The, you know, they have a few channels for us, and CNN was one of them. And they were showing um, Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown. I don't know if you've yeah, ever seen it. Yeah, yeah. And he did one episode where he went to Antarctica and went to the two uh, two of the U.S. research stations, McMurdo and the South Pole. Uh-huh. And he was doing I, – I had never – known anything about Antarctica before that. I didn't know there were research stations. <laughs> uh-huh. I didn't know you could go there. I knew there were some tourist expeditions that go there, but, you know, nothing like living there. Mm-hmm. And so he was talking about th- these stations, and then he walked in to McMurdo's dining room, and he was talking, he was, you know, talking about all the different types of people there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I can work there. Like, <laughs> I have gotten, I have been able to go to every continent at that point so far. (laughs) 
without having to pay my own flight ticket. Uh-huh. And I was like, I'm going to get to Antarctica this way. This is like, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So I re- I looked into it. And again, not much information, but I found um, how, how to apply for it and apply to a ton of jobs at McMurdo and mm-hmm. one stuck. So okay. uh, that's how I ended up there. Now, are, are you on a, a government website or, or what website are you looking for jobs on Antarctica? Yeah, so I... Th- I think I just searched for um, the U- U.S. Antarctic program. Oh, okay. So they have a website, usap.gov, I think. And then they have a jobs and or basically an employment page. I can't remember the exact um, URL for that. But I do have it on my website. Yeah. And I just made an ebook about it. So, okay. uh, yeah, people can look through there. But, um, yeah, it, it shows all the different contractors that – hire for different positions so you just oh. apply through there okay so it's contractors mm-hmm. yeah, okay yeah, yeah okay so mcmurdo is kind of closer to new zealand right it's a little correct a little more north yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's on the coast um yeah. it's ross island so yeah it's uh the gateway city is christchurch uh-huh. and then depending on what plane you're on it's anywhere from i think like three to eight hours of a flight to mcmurdo okay and and that one is bigger, right? That one has a couple hundred people? Correct. Yeah. McMurdo is the largest okay. uh, research station in Antarctica. It, My first season, it was right before COVID. We maxed out, I think, at 1,300 people, oh, wow. which is not – it's not normal now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think right now they max out at like maybe 1,000 tops, but – yeah, it's it's a small town yeah. or a small city, I should say. It's like a city almost. Yeah, a thousand people with that many in such a small area. Okay, and you said eighty like percent men, like a lot of dudes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it it was funny in Anthony Bourdain's um, episode. He was talking to one woman who had been there for like forty years or something oh, like wow. that. I can't even remember, but she was talking about how. When um, it was run by the military back then, mm. um, it was only men only. Okay. Um, and then a general came in and was like, where's the women? And they were like, <laughs> well, we don't we don't have facilities uh-huh. for the women. Yeah. He was like, well, you better get some. Mm. Yeah. Where are they? Huh. So, um, yeah. So the demographics are changing. Sure. I see it changing every year, yeah. which is great. Um, but yes. Yeah, it's mostly men. Yeah, a lot of physical science, like a lot of physics and astronomy Mm -hmm. and, you know, chemistry. Yeah, but a lot lot of the, it's trades and, you know, a lot of construction and, um, Hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you did a a shorter, a shorter summer at McMurdo, Mm -hmm. which is actually our winter, but it's the. Correct. Yeah, it's it's opposite. opposite Yeah, so our, the, the summer in Antarctica is like October, November ish through march but but then you get the one-year contract at south pole i did yeah yeah so that was this last year yeah. from november to november that's and, and i think do you think cruise ship life kind of prepared you a little bit for south pole i life? do yeah <laughs> absolutely because um for people who don't know the south pole station there is nothing around you You're, it's just <laughs> there's no mountains uh-huh. there's no wildlife there's no trees mm. there's no nature it's just white outside. Mm-hmm. It's just ice. It's just as far as the eye can see. There's nothing to look at. <laughs> um, so it's basically like there were times I would look out the window. I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm on a ship right uh-huh. now. Um, but yeah, and also it's I, I compare it to like a space station because it's really just that one building that yeah. we're all in. You live in there. You I work in there uh-huh. and you eat in there and that's it. It's kind of like the ISS. Yeah. It's just, that's all there is. Y- if you want yeah. vegetables, you got to grow them yourself, <laughs> you know, in the little high. Hy- yeah. We, yeah. We're lucky enough to have a greenhouse because McMurdo does not have oh, a greenhouse anymore. Okay. So the people that do the winter there don't get any fresh v- vegetables. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So when you say winter, you're talking about what, five months of total darkness. <laughs> right. Yeah. So about that. Yeah. It's just 24 seven darkness that's crazy and uh cold <laughs> but then you get like the longest sunrise you get like a one month of dawn right mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah it's it's really nice it's it's just like a gradual you know we we explain it like if you imagine one day 
being a year at the South Pole. Uh So back, you know, in California, sunrise will happen over like what two, three hours gradually, Uh right? uh The sun will come up. And at the South Pole, you'll have, you know, a couple weeks where the sun (laughs) is coming up slowly. That's cool. Yeah. And then one sunrise a year and one sunset Mm -hmm. a year. That's correct. That's a little different too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's really cool. So what were you doing there? You were a host? You were a steward? Yeah. So it's called steward coordinator, um, but it just encompasses uh, five different departments. So the dining room, janitorial, um, housing, and then retail, and then also the post office. The post office doesn't really run in the winter. Mm. Um, it's just a bit of organizing and then really uh, it it getting it started at the end of winter and then closing it down at the end of summer. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a lot of little front of the house departments. Okay. So you're kind of hospitality, you're front facing, you're client facing. Yeah. And there's yeah. only there's only about 80 or 100 people at South Pole? Uh, in the winter, this winter we had 40. Oh, yeah. 43 people. Skeleton in the staff. summer. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. In the in the summer, we can have I think up to like 130 or so. Okay, so much much smaller, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and then the winter is super hardcore because you're no flights in or out. You're kind of there. Um, yeah, no flights in or out. Um, there have been medevacs uh-huh. in the middle of winter before, but yeah. it takes I think a minimum of two or three weeks to get a plane down if everything goes right. Yeah. So what was your daily life like? You were kind of waking up and what were you doing? Um, well, it depends. So there, I, I kind of split my schedule up into like, there were a few days that were my dishwashing days. So um, me and uh, my coworker, we would swap off doing the dishes for breakfast and lunch. And then, um, so that was a full shift if I was on the dishwashing day. And outside of the dishwashing days, I would either run the store, restock. Um, There's a lot of just like housekeeping we do Mm. over the winter because it's not busy. So there's a lot of like Jano projects. We're doing a lot of reorganizing of all our chemicals and doing deep cleans. Um, I shampooed all the carpets Uh in the station. So every single room, I shampooed all the carpets in every single room. (laughs) Um, It's basically a deep clean of yeah. The entire station. So you're working. You're <laughs> Yeah. You're not just sitting around reading books. You're <laughs> No, no. Uh, but it's it's kind of nice. There were a few people who um by nature of their job are not very busy over the winter. Mm-hmm. Um but I think they got bored. Okay. Whereas for me like I had I had so many things I could choose from. Uh-huh. So right in the beginning of um, even in summer, I was already planning like how I was going to when I was going to do all these projects and, you know, in what order. So every week I was like, okay, well, I've got this. I'm going to go do this Uh this week. And the time flew for me. Wow. Okay. Um, For some people, I think they were just like, I guess I'll go watch TV now. Uh (laughs) uh I I read a cool post that you made. You were the first Japanese woman to overwinter. At, at I was, South Pole. yeah. That's cool. At the South Pole. Yeah, there have only been 261 women so far in total who have ever wintered over. Uh-huh. And yeah, I'm the first of Japanese descent, first woman of Japanese descent, mm-hmm. which is pretty exciting. That's very um, cool. There's one historian. He spent quite a few seasons at the South Pole, and he's like known as the South Pole historian. Um, his website, southpolestation.com has a ton of information Uh and he has kept track of everything. Um, So yeah, he's, he's got records of all the firsts of everything. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's cool to be in the book, man. You're, you're in the, in the annals. (laughs) Yeah. My dad, my dad was excited. And then my mom, my mom was like, Oh, can you, can you try to see if you're a first for anything Chinese? You're Chinese too, you know? And I was like, well, (laughs) I'm probably the least educated Chinese person <laughs> that has ever wintered at the South Pole. Oh, man. Yeah, you're with a bunch so of PhDs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So social life down there. Um, I mm-hmm. saw some kind of fun little parties. You do Christmas in July yeah. or is it quote unquote in July? Yeah, that was a fun one. That was that was just because um, we had a good group of people who just are Christmas enthusiasts, myself included. It's my favorite holiday. Uh-huh. Um, just 
the festivities sure. of Christmas. I love it. And during the summer, our summer or December Christmas, we had a bit of issues with COVID. So uh. our actual Christmas celebration, dinner, events kind of got cut down a quite a bit just because we had to limit a lot of things. So we were kind of bummed about that. Yeah. Um, so July came around and I was like, hey. anyone want to do? <laughs> yeah. So we brought all the direct decorations uh-huh. out and it's a smaller group. So, sure. you know, people really get into it. We brought all the decorations out. It's dark out. So it actually feels Winter, like Christmas, yeah. a white Christmas. Always. <laughs> yeah. We had, yeah, we had cookie decorating. We had oh, gingerbread nice. house competitions. We made a candy cane laying out of cardboard. Um, and we did a proper Christmas dinner and Secret Santa. It was it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks cool. I mean, it just you got to keep yourself interested, right? <laughs> Ex- exactly. Find yeah. something to celebrate. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it's good for morale, you know, Absolutely. just to have something exciting to look forward to. So, it I think we had a really great community. Like nearly every month, someone had some big event. So, uh, you know, I did Christmas in July. Um, my coworker did a um pole olympics pole olympics where he did a whole bunch of events <laughs> uh-huh. silly events serious events yeah. you know it was it was just fun yeah yeah and and you can get outside in the summer but not for very long like it's not much to do out there right it's just ice yeah in the so in the summer you i mean it's the same in, in winter it just depends on how how much you can bear the cold mm. people go skiing people go on hikes um there's uh sometimes there's a they put in a sled hill for summer christmas for december christmas so uh-huh. um <laughs> around christmas or new year's you know people go sledding uh-huh. um but yeah not not a whole lot to do but you you make your fun yeah yeah i think it's cool you can mm-hmm. you can do a quick lap and do 24 time zones in two minutes <laughs> yeah exactly two i seconds. mean less than that because it's literally just yeah it's just a spin around spin around the geographic south pole and you're done that's very cool do you ever take a compass down there and just see, hey, every direction is north? <laughs> oh, we tried. We tried to do that, actually. We were trying to get our GPS, um, uh, to, our, our phones yeah. to read 90 degrees exactly. Huh. Um, but I don't know if anyone was successful. We had like four or five people trying it, and yeah. they only got to like 89.999. <laughs> but I think that could be, it could be a instrument sure. issue. Yeah. Possibly. I would guess. Because it's our phones. Reception is not yeah. the greatest. <laughs> yeah. Guess. But there, there are normally, normally there is a surveyor who uh, um, marks the exact geographic South Pole every year because it moves. It moves, yeah. By a few meters because yeah. um, it's an ice sheet. So, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the rotation mm-hmm. of the Earth, right? So it's just 30 mm-hmm. feet, 30 yeah. feet or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Oh man! All right, I you know I'm a I'm a science teacher, so this is this is great for me. <laughs> I think, oh, awesome! I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think so. Really cool. Yeah. So would you would you go back? I mean, you need a little break right now, but would you go back? I do need a break. I my brain is still a bit foggy, but I I think I would. Um, I don't know how soon, just because mentally and physically, mm-hmm. I'm starting to realize it did do a number on me. Mm-hmm. Um, just everything. You feel that you actually feel like you're aging there, uh-huh. I think. Um, just things don't heal as quickly. Uh-huh. Things ache more. I had a random pain on my side for the longest time when I was there. And then I talked to the doctor about it. And he was like, I think once you leave, it's going to disappear. Huh. And sure enough, I'm out and it's like nothing ever happened. Huh. Um, so it's it's also a lot of, a lot of stress on the body and yeah. the mind. Because you're at elevation um, too. I, I didn't know this, but you're yeah. You're almost you're over a mile up. Like you're yeah. We're nine thousand <laughs> some odd feet. Yeah, yeah, so that's like top of Lake Tahoe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's tough too. I think that that and then mm-hmm. you have to exercise just to keep your body a little bit in shape. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So again, not for, for everyone. Now, <laughs> not absolutely not for everyone. This is definitely not for everyone. Yeah. But like you said, I think on your website you said, but if if I wanted to go, it, it could be fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. It go. is, it is expensive. Yeah. So I mean, if you wanted to just go to Antarctica, there are, like I mentioned, cruises that will go around the peninsula, yeah. and those are um, relatively more affordable. Yeah. I mean, in context, but as far as the South Pole specifically, yeah. you have to, you know, take these tourists flights and they are expensive yeah um 
Yeah. So I, I don't see just, you know, an average person being like, oh, I think I'll just go to the South right. Pole. Like that doesn't happen. Yeah. 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 I had a, I, I did a research thing at Stanford one summer and uh, I was in the biology lab, but my, uh, one of the other teachers, there's a program for teachers. And one of the other teachers was working on a, um, a telescope and mm. this group got invited to Antarctica and they brought her along and I was like, what? Oh, that's awesome. I know. We were all like, what? You know, like we didn't get anything. Out of, you know, I mean, we, we got we've, to experience We've got to figure out how to get. Oh, actually, there is um, there's a STEAM program. Have you ever uh-huh. heard of it? It's like Polar STEAM. Oh. Um, I don't know the specifics, but I think they just reopened it. Um, but I think educators can oh. like apply to go down. Hey. Definitely look into it. I, I, I just saw it the other day that it reopened and... Um, it had been closed for a while. It's like if you're uh, an artist and writer, there's that uh-huh. avenue, and then also through the STEAM program. Huh. Yeah. Or or not the STEAM program, the uh, <laughs> educators huh. avenue. Yeah. Look into it. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I, I got kid, I got teenage kids, you know. I don't, I don't think I'm going on Antarctic trips just yet, but we'll see. <laughs> In a few years, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> So everyone out there can find out more information on Michelle's blog. Lots of cool stuff. I, I poked around there for, mm-hmm. for a little bit. Very interesting. Very interesting stuff on there. Thank you. Um, yeah, you even have like criteria for what things that you might want to look for in jobs mm-hmm. overseas. And so, yeah, so go take a look at that. Uh, one one blog post I saw was you had a, a post about traveling while Asian American, mm-hmm. you know, and since we are the Infatuation Podcast, I did notice... Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the things. So what what are some of the upsides and downsides of being Asian American when you travel? Well, downside, obviously, no one thinks I speak English. <laughs> but it's also like they're just immediately impressed with my accent. And, you know, like, oh, you speak English so clearly. How'd you learn that? <laughs> Uh, so that's always kind of funny, but um, the other one is no one thinks I'm American, which right. is both a good thing and bad thing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's it de- my it depends on my mood really, like how it catches me because sometimes it'll make me really upset because mm. I'm like I am American. Uh-huh. Um, English is the only fluent my only fluent language, yeah. but at the same time, sometimes. It's just like I don't have the time or energy to deal with this, and it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, well, my uh, so, actually, since mm-hmm. you're in the Middle East right now, you know, my my friend travels a little bit for work, and and he mm-hmm. he says in the Middle East he'd rather be Asian than American. Because mm-hmm. you know? it's I've I've realized that about when I travel to most places, I'm actually glad people don't think I'm American. Right. right. <laughs> um, so it does have its pros and cons, but in places like. Especially when I was in the Antarctic stations and people are just they like they are my people, right? Because it's Americans, mostly Americans right. working at these American stations. And they don't believe that I'm American. <laughs> like that's huh. that was the one that irritated me the most. Right. And I actually got so mad I was like scrubbing a sheet tray uh-huh. and I threw it straight across the room because I was so mad and I was like <laughs> I'm going to go take a break now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, you know, because um, you grew up in the Bay Area and, you know, it's exactly. it's pretty normal to be Asian American, not have an accent, mm-hmm. to be born here. Yeah. You know, so, you know I, I'm a couple generations in. You meet people, mm-hmm. like my grandma had no accent because she was born, mm-hmm. you know, and so she mm-hmm. confused people all the time. <laughs> she yeah. was like this little old Chinese lady and then she walks in in perfect English and they're like, wait, where are you yeah. from? So, yeah, there's a little bit of that, but, uh Yeah. Overall, I've I've never had any really negative. My, you know, it's interesting. My cousin just went. He's Chinese American. Went to Korea, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. thinks he got bad service because he was Chinese. Oh, interesting. Because I, yeah, I think you know, tourists are tourists, right? So there's there's bad tourists mm-hmm. everywhere. But I think sometimes right. the Chinese tourists get a little bit of a bad rap. <laughs> yeah, the iPads. Yeah, or everything. The yeah, and large group. <laughs> Right, yeah. right, and yeah, so it's a stereotype. so he he felt like maybe it was because he was Chinese that he didn't get good service, but uh, it's who possible. knows? Possible, 
Yeah. Maybe he's just a jerk. Who knows? Right. <laughs> Maybe the people so many don't variables. like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But all right, cool. Hey, so you survived our difficult questions. Are you ready for our lightning round? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't think too hard. Just whatever okay. comes to mind. All right. First okay. thing that comes to mind when I say Japan. Oh, cherry blossoms. <laughs> okay. First thing that comes to mind when I say Antarctica. Oh, penguins. Okay. Although I have, I didn't see any penguins this last year, but yeah, <laughs> penguins. <laughs> I they would them. be at McMurdo? They would be yeah. a little farther? Yeah, they're, by they're the water. They're along the coast, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. obviously. <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. uh, and first thing that comes to mind when I say cruise ship. Ooh, food. Yeah. <laughs> food. Lots and lots of food. <laughs> no, I dream. I still dream about our cruise. It's so amazing. It's like, I'll have the some prime rib the, and the lobster. <laughs> exactly. So, and some of the food, I mean, there's, there's a restaurant um, a specialty restaurant, Royal Caribbean mm-hmm. Wonderland. It's uh-huh. all about like fusion and innovative gastronomy. I don't even know what it is. Wow. It's just like all the senses get hit mm-hmm. and it's just like, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I could do a year as a guest on a cruise ship because I would weigh 300 pounds. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> but uh, for a week, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so good. Just indulge for a week. Yeah. <laughs> It's your vacation. You weren't it. Yeah, they have they have gyms. You can run a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so think uh, the answer is your favorite. All right. So your favorite, okay. your favorite country to visit. Ooh. Uh, oh no. It's my too, first, too my many. First, yeah. My my first thought was Russia. Oh but, really? But that was only because one of my ships had an itinerary where we were. Um, where we visited St. Petersburg for like three days in a row. We just stayed in St. Uh, Petersburg and it was during the world cup. Oh, okay. um, so <laughs> at that time it was just an amazing experience. Like I would go to work, finish work at like eight or nine in the evening, run off the ship, go watch, go to the main <sighs> area where they were showing, you know, the game. I don't know anything about screen, football or yeah. soccer, but it's just it was just great to be there with so many different people. It was just a very joyous and fun yeah. occasion. And then I would just yeah. run back to the ship and then sleep, go to work the next day, and then get off the ship again. It was it was awesome. And uh, I I had never been to Russia before that, and it was just huh. so beautiful, um, the architecture yeah. and everything. So yeah, hopefully no. I get to go back one day. Nothing wrong with that answer. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. countries, you know, a certain snippet of time is mm-hmm. the best. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Favorite one time view. So like picture a snapshot. Like what's your best view ever in your oh. life? Oh, one time view. That's probably at the South Pole this winter. We had some uh-huh. amazing auroras. Oh, unlike yeah. anything I've ever uh-huh. seen before. I had never seen one aurora before, so I didn't even know what to expect, but yeah, it was, yeah, I've got some pictures on my Instagram. It's just absolutely uh-huh. gorgeous, like stunning, yeah. absolutely stunning. Yeah. And, and not that many people see the Southern lights, right? So you're, you're no, one of the few. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Northern so lights, all these, a lot of people right. see Northern lights. Southern right. I still lights. Want, I still would like to see the, the Northern lights though. Sure, I, sure. I think it would still be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, me too, me too. All right, uh, favorite place to visit for food? No, oh, Japan. Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you I, gotta I, go. I haven't been, but I, you know, that's yeah. that is ninety percent of my motivation for going mm-hmm. to Japan. Oh, it's just so good. Yeah, and then you just walk it off. Yeah, so you don't come back gaining any weight. Yeah, you could do Mount Fuji, right? You could. Do- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, favorite way to travel. Boat, mm. air, donkey, camel? <laughs> donkey. Uh, probably train, actually. Okay. It's... Hey, are there train jobs? Can you get a <laughs> Oh, uh, I think there are. You know, the long, the long, the long distance trains, the cross country trains, probably, right? Uh huh. Um, I've never looked into it, but, uh, Ooh. yeah, I, I never was a train person before I moved to Japan. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, yeah. I'm just bummed everywhere I go when there's not a train system. Yeah. No, I was talking to someone from China and I was talking about flights and they were like, no, we'd take the train. We'd rather take the train because mm. you know, it's so much high speed rail in China. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Train travel. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. What's one travel item that you don't leave home without? Mm. I've got my 
sarong that I got in Mauritius mm-hmm. for like two or three dollars. I've had it all these years. It's still in perfect condition. I use it for everything. Yeah. Towel, a wrap, uh-huh. uh, pillow, uh-huh. cover up. <laughs> and it's just so thin. It packs easily. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think I've been anywhere where I didn't oh, bring that's it. Cool. So, so yeah, that's that's my that's my item. You could, could you dress it up if you had to? You dress it up a little, dress it down. That's mm, kind of not really because it's quite. It, yeah, it's quite thin. But um, you know, when I go to the beach and I don't want to bring right. like an actual towel uh-huh. to dry off, you know, that's thin enough that it'll dry quickly, and it's just something to throw on really quick instead of yeah. like fully putting clothes on or no, something that's the key drying quickly yeah. is the key i, I traveled mm-hmm. uh overseas where you're hand washing stuff and like american oh, weight yeah. t-shirts they just take forever to dry oh, you know. <laughs> yeah yeah the, those cotton yeah. shirts they're just heavy no, I, I i learned my lesson <laughs> that's all i had and it rained for like three weeks mm-hmm. and everything was wet for three weeks so so quick dry quick dry is the way to go. <laughs> pay a little more for yeah. a patagonia t-shirt <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah especially if you're going somewhere Absolutely. humid nothing's gonna ever yeah. dry all right and we like to end our <laughs> interviews by asking our guests to choose an infatuation an infatuation is anyone in the asian community that has inspired you could be living or deceased someone you know or a stranger so michelle who is your infatuation uh, well, recently I've been watching a lot of June's Kitchen. Uh huh. Do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So when I was out, I, I I had followed him before, you know. But when I'm on the ice in Antarctica, I'm not watching YouTube like long YouTube videos because uh-huh. it just takes up too much bandwidth. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm I'm just now catching up um, <laughs> with some of the stuff, and he's just got the cutest cats and. Uh-huh. He's just such so wholesome. Yeah, um, it's a very calming presence just watching his videos. So. Yeah. yeah, June. All right. No, that's I. You know that that would be hard for me. Like going to somewhere like Antarctica or a cruise ship, not having internet. I'm so dependent on watching, you know, and streaming. Yeah, <laughs> but also it's nice because you just disconnect. You disconnect. <laughs> I found that I I'm I wasn't on social media a whole lot in Antarctica, but I found mm-hmm. once I got out. I did not open social media for like a month because I was just like, there's just so much to do, so much to like see outside. I can go for a walk and not Uh be cold. I'm going to go look at cats and dogs (laughs) and, you know, I was like, yeah, exactly. I was like, I don't, I don't even have time to like just sit on my phone. That's true. Um, That's true. Yeah. It's, it's an, it's a nice break, but a year is a long time to live that way. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you trying to download an episode on Antarctica to see what country showed up. But yeah. unfortunately, it's probably, you know, whoever your internet is, that's where yeah. the location is. So I didn't probably get any. showed up as Denver. Yeah, I know. Well, boring. But, yeah. <laughs> but you tried. So I appreciate that. I did. And it was cool. I was, uh, it was, it was, I was actually listening to um, your 100th episode while I was um, stitching my, my cranes uh-huh. onto the. Yeah, I made yeah. a, a thousand cranes in the shape of Antarctica or uh-huh. installation. It's at pole now. But yeah, I was I was on the floor just stitching them together while listening to your podcast. So yeah. that was fun. She she has some some little isolation vibes. Like she was in Alaska learning violin, right? Like Yeah, yeah, exactly. So same. <laughs> yeah, she was great. She was great. Rose Corelli. All right. So you have survived. Thank you so much, Michelle. This was really fun. Yeah, absolutely. This was this was great. Well, we'll do it again sometime. Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, no, I, I would love to catch up with you whenever you want. So uh, I did a whole episode mm-hmm. on travel with different people. Oh, cool. But I, I feel like I could do one whole show with just you. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. A- anytime I've got travel. internet. <laughs> yeah, right? That's the hard part is like, yeah. where do you think you'll be in five months? We don't know. <laughs> yeah, no idea. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that sounds like a, an adventure, but uh, good catching up with you. We'll we'll talk, talk to you again soon. And so everyone out there, uh, if you want to follow Michelle, you can go at Wander Eat Right on social media or check out her blog at wandereatright.com. And as, as I always mention, you can write to us at infatuationpodcast at gmail.com or follow us on social media at infatuationpodcast. All these details we'll put in the show notes. So you can follow us wherever you get your podcasts, you know, Spotify, Apple, all those places. And yeah, you know, if you have a chance, give us a like, give us a review. That would be helpful. Give us a rating. 
Um, but let's see, until we talk to you again, on behalf of Michelle and myself, we hope that you're all happy, healthy, and safe out there. Thank you again for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everyone. Yay. You want to say bye? Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs>